morning. I was reading scriptures and didn't realize it was past seven o'clock. I am sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Matt and Randy in the morning. We're here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. It is February 5th, 2022. Um, those that follow the channel know that usually when I wear this, it means that after this, um, we've got a Jeep thing to do. <laughs> so today we do for the next four weeks, we will be... Well, next three weeks we'll be preparing for Jeeping with Judd, the, the big fundraiser that we help with every year uh, for Sheriff Judd in Polk County to help uh, Polk County Charities for Youth and, and things like that. Uh, so every Saturday this month we have to learn the trails that we're going to be leading people through come the last weekend of the month. So it's a, a big event. Um, a, I want to say there's 2,200 Jeeps already signed up for it uh, that will be leading through trails. So it's not a little thing, it's a big thing. And it, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of volunteers to pull it off. It's, it's a great thing every year that we feel honored to be able to be a part of. Um, and if, if you don't know it and you like Jeep things, uh, Pastor Matt also runs a Jeep channel. It's called Florida Jeep Rides. Uh, and it's just another way for us to reach out to people. You know, the Lord walked around where the people was. The uh, disciples were. Everywhere we go, we are to represent our Lord. And it's an honor to be able to do that. I can hear the phone ringing. I am so sorry. Let me see what's going on. Well, whoever that was, hung up. <laughs> I'm glad, but, but I know that it sounds really loud in the background. I can't hear it that loud, but I have I know, and I don't know why it went off, because it is on Do Not Disturb. Anyway, let's get back into the Word. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have the opportunity to, to gather together, Lord, across the distances. It doesn't matter how many miles apart we are, Lord, that you unite us. Through your spirit, O oh Lord, you give us the opportunity to get into your word together. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you have your way in us. Teach us. Guide us. Give us understanding. Let us have that mind of Christ. Let us have a heart that's hungry after you, Lord. Don't let our hearts deceive us, Lord. But let us truly walk with a heart that cries out to you. Lord, teach us this morning, Holy Spirit. Let me only speak what you want me to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday. I told you yesterday that I had some more scriptures that I wanted to share that I didn't get a chance to share. Um, yesterday we said, sin leads to death, but following and obeying God to life. Both choices are eternal and forever. God created us in His image. We are to live forever. This flesh is not going to live forever, but our soul is going to live forever. And it's either going to be in heaven, which is God's choice for us throughout eternity with blessings and joy. Or we can make the choice to close the door on God and say no. And say yes to sin and our flesh. And the eventual ending of that is death, pain, sorrow, torment forever and ever. Not because God chose it for us, but because we made the choice to go that way rather than to take God's hand and let us lead us into everlasting life. Jesus paid the price. Your way for that has already been paid. All we have to do is accept it and allow Jesus to be Lord of our life. So I am going to be picking up. These are some of the scriptures that I had for yesterday. Proverbs 19.23 says this. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Remember, that's a reverence. That's a knowing that God is the Lord God Almighty. It's not the fear that makes you high, but it's the fear that lets you bow, bow down and just say, Lord, you are God. 
You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the Lord God Almighty. It is his breath that's in me. You know, it's acknowledging who he is. And because of that, there is a reverent fear that happens. It says, leads to life. And he who has it, listen to this, will abide in satisfaction. That's Psalms 1923. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. I wrote down, Seek ye, and ye shall find. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to whom knocks, it will be open. You know, the more you're in the word, the more you're in the word. Open up the word of God. Seek after the Lord. Because then the things that you ask for will tend to be the things that God wants for you. And those things that are good for you, God will give you. He's not going to give you a serpent if you're asking for bread. But if you're asking for something that's going to harm you, as a good father, he's going to say no and not give it to you. If he feels you're not ready for something, you know what? You're not going to have that thing until God knows you're ready. Because getting things too soon, if you give a young man a car, a race car, let's, you know, a car that goes really fast and really sporty, when he's 16, and he's not mature enough to know the responsibility that comes to that. You may be giving him a death trap. Not knowingly. But if you wait till that child is mature, maybe 25 or so, where he understands the responsibilities, then it's something different. God knows what to give us and when to give it to us. We have to trust his timing. Now we're going to go read in Matthew. Oops, and I just took my marker off. <laughs> Matthew 7. And I'm going to read Matthew 7 first. I had written down Matthew 7, 7. So here we go. He answered said to them, oh, hold on. oh, this is, again, watching our heart. He says, this people honors me with their lips. But their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of man. You know, we've been talking a lot about not being deceived, about knowing the truth. Um, and there's people that may look like they're serving God. They're saying the right things. But if their fruit is not godly fruit, then what they're teaching is not proper. You know, we knew someone who was a great teacher, but his life, a teach, great teacher of the word, but his life was a mess. His life was a mess, and it caused a lot of people who were following him to fall away when they saw that his life did not match up what he preached. We must be careful and watch our lives if we're saying that we love Jesus, that we're a believer of the word, and we're acting like, you know, yes, we are Christians, but yet we do everything like the world does, something's not right. Check your heart. If you didn't listen to yesterday's devotion, there's some checkpoints there that you can ask yourself so that you don't get deceived. Because you want to know that your walk with the Lord is true. We're going to now pick up in Matthew 7, 13 through 21. It says, Making the word of God of no effect through the tradition. Uh, again, here we have that difference of those that really follow and those that are just 
religious, maybe we should say, making the word of God an effect through their tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which comes out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart? Meaning, you know, they had the tradition of the different foods that they could eat, what they couldn't eat. And God said, you know, that food is not going to make a difference with your walk with God. It's what comes into the heart. It says, but his stomach and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, what comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart um, of man precede evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lawlessness, and evil eye, blasphemy, blasphemy, excuse me, pride, foolishness, and all these things come from within a man and defile a man. I don't know how to express how important the Word of God is. It is easy to get caught up in the religious things. But what God is seeking is your heart. Don't do things out of habit. Do things out of a heart that loves the Lord. Don't trust in works. Trust in the work that Jesus did for you. That is where our salvation is found. Galatians 6.19 says this. I'm going to start, six, excuse me, 6, 1 through 9, not 6, 19. It says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself, but let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Your walk with the Lord is a very personal walk. It is between you and God. Guard it. Protect it. You know, watch your heart. Yesterday we talked about when you're pointing at someone, you've got three fingers pointing back at you. Make sure your life is right. It goes on and says, For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh, of the flesh will reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't seem like things are going the way you thought they were going to go. If you are walking with God and if you love God, you've got to know beyond any shadow of a doubt that He's going to work all these things for your good. Keep seeking. Keep pushing toward the Lord. Narrow is the way. It's not broad. And there's few that find it. 
There is such a joy when you realize that the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, considers you fearfully and wonderfully made. He loves you. He made a way for you to be in communion with him. No matter what your past may have looked like, he makes all things new. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, we will be live streaming our church service. Uh, if you can come in person at 1030 in the morning, we'll be there. Intercession City Church of God. You can look it up. It's Intercession City Church of God. If you are local, I would love to have you. Matthew and I love to have brothers and sisters in Christ come and join us. If you haven't asked Jesus into your life yet and you want to come and hear some more, come. Come meet us there or message us and we'd be happy to talk to you. We share this because Jesus changed our lives. It's not because we learned it in seminary, but it's because Jesus has been real to us in our life. We truly have been born again, and it is awesome, and we want you to have the same thing. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice.